Here's what Diana Rossini tweeted not that long ago. And this is sort of, I guess, the latest up-to-date piece of information, if you will. The 49ers, to this point, haven't been satisfied with the Steelers' offers and would like a receiver in return for Ayuk as part of a trade. Although, they are open to players at other positions, league sources said. All right. Hey, translate all that. Well, what does they that want, mean to you? They want a good player. And if they can't get a receiver, which they'd like a receiver, but as we've talked in the past, Pittsburgh has one really good receiver on a rookie deal. They're not trading him. They've got another pretty good receiver that the 49ers may or may not want. I don't even know if that player would be a starter. Which one are you talking about? Talking about Deontay. Oh, uh, Deontay no. Johnson. He's not there anymore. Oh, he's, he's, he went, to, he's he went to Carolina. Oh, there you have it. Yeah, your other receivers are uh, like Calvin Austin. Oh, yeah, never mind. Van Jefferson. Yeah, Van Jefferson's the third receiver. The Niners <laughs> yeah. already have one. Anyway, so yeah, The go Niners ahead. need a one or a two. Yeah. And I know there was talk about them being interested in the tight end, Fryermuth, which Pittsburgh's not going to trade wouldn't, Fryermuth. Wouldn't, wouldn't think. No. And, you know, then you get into bigger names like Minka Fitzpatrick and – TJ Watt, and these are not players that are going to be on the move. So then you get into second tier offensive linemen, backup edge rushers, players who maybe could be a part of the deal, but depends on how many picks would come along with that. Or do you involve a third team? And, and, and right. are there players out there, right? I mean, like, and, and this is, I believe this to be speculative and just fun fodder for social media, but. I like our show to be fun, yeah. so why not share fun fodder? Okay. I have heard Pittsburgh only wants to give up picks, and the 49ers would like a player. So the idea has been floated of take the picks from Pittsburgh and send them to Vegas, and Devontae Adams comes to the 49ers. That's fun. Everybody happy. Pretty much. Don't we like happy? Especially if you can send them one pick and then you're able to keep a pick. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. And I don't. Ayuk for a first and a third. Well, and the and agent. And then you send the first to the Raiders and you get Devontae for a first. Yeah, I don't know if Pittsburgh's looking to give up a first. But, yeah, if it's a two and a three or a one and a two, whatever. Yep. Like, I, yeah, I like your idea. And I do think part of this has sort of been born from the fact that Brandon's agent, who, by the way, is also the agent for John Lynch. I don't know if that that's sort of been under discussed. So <laughs> a little incestuous, but anyway, totally in this particular case. But the agent for Brandon Ayuk and John Lynch has been spending the week at Raiders practice. Hmm. There you have it. And we saw him in the background <laughs> of, uh, of the yeah. NFL Network uh, yeah. live from when they were doing the camp thing. So maybe that's a part of it. And it makes sense that Devontae Adams is a guy who is from here and wants to win, and has been openly critical of his ability to stay alive as a player for Las Vegas. Right, right. like I think he likes good quarterbacks. Doesn't have one right now. Certainly didn't have one last year. Mark grandy has got that look in his eye. He's got that look in his eye right now. And the light is on. Yeah, he's like, I got something to say, damn it. What do you got to say? Well, you brought up a three-team trade. Yeah. There was also, I've seen some, uh, you know, social media fodder, as you put it. Another AFC West wide receiver, Denver Broncos, Cortland Sutton. Maybe the Niners interested in Cortland Sutton, and they work a three-team trade with the Steelers and the Broncos. I saw that, too. Um, I know we all know, at least in our industry, we know Ben Albright, who is based in Denver. He reports that that's not a thing. Um, again, take whichever reports you want. He says that that is not being discussed. I don't, uh, but but yeah, uh, who knows? Who knows what we're going to get? Maybe we're going to get a nothing burger. Sure. And I I do think that, as we talked about yesterday, three-team trades in the NFL are extremely rare. and They're very difficult to pull off. But the hypothetical of Devontae and Pittsburgh and the Niners, that is an appetizing one. And while we're doing fun fodder radio, <laughs> that is pretty fun. Because well, you mean- picture... Devontae Adams is much more like Brandon Ayuk. He's better than Brandon Ayuk. Even though he's older than Ayuk, he's better still yes. than Brandon Ayuk, but he's that type of a receiver. He can hit you from all three levels. You know, the the short, the intermediate, and the deep route. And he can get off the line. He gets yes. open. He is, in fact, maybe the best in the entire game at shaking one-on-one coverage, and that's what Brandon does well and better than Debo 
And so it's what the 49ers would probably be after. I have stated this, and it's not that I'm changing my mind. I have stated that if there is a trade of Brandon Ayuk, it represents a failure. And what I mean by that is not um, is not that the 49ers should just cower and give Brandon whatever he's asking for. What I mean by that is this is not what you do. You don't trade your good players in August when you're trying to win a Super Bowl. However, I'll add this. Of all the things I've heard, there's only one that would make 49er fans forget Brandon Ayuk four seconds after the trade ended. And that would be Devontae Adams. Yeah, that would be. That's the only one. I don't want to hear about Amari Cooper. I don't want to hear about Kendrick Bourne. Oh, no. We're not on. going to. The Patriots are out. I don't want to hear about Terry McLaurin. Cortland Sutton's a good wide receiver. I, I don't even. Yeah, but, but that's not Brandon Ayuk. I'm not going to do that. And even George Pickens, all of these things are fun, cool fantasy drafts are soon. There's one that would make me go. Brandon, go bye-bye. And that would be (laughs) Devontae flipping Adams. Bye-bye. No doubt. (laughs) That's the only one. And they could do a receiver doc part two, and they wouldn't have to leave this one facility. Just just go to Santa Clara and do the whole doc. That's it. No, he would be one that you would, (laughs) you know, it would feel like you won the trade, even if you wound up with no picks. So Ayuk commands a second and a third. Let's just pretend those second and third go to Vegas, and you know what? You even got to throw in, maybe you throw in Eli Mitchell, or you throw in one of your receivers, yeah, I mean, Danny Gray, because there are receivers that you're going to cut that are going to be NFL players elsewhere. Agreed. And I do think that your running back room is probably one body too big. Matt Mayoko today with a great early breakdown of the 53-man roster as he sees it breaking camp, and when you start to look at some of these position groups... They've got some depth in there where you've got some guys who are going to shake free. The receivers in general, you've got Bell, you've got Conley, Trent Taylor. These are all guys who might be on the bubble for making the roster or not. My dude, I just went to the Niner roster, like their training camp roster. Yeah. It's got 15 receivers on it. Well, T.O. just got yes. released. Yes, Tariqo, so, so yeah. you're correct. T.O. too. So now call it 14. Okay. But they added a new one today. In, uh, in Robbie Chosen, formerly known as Robbie Anderson. His last name is now Chosen? It's now Chosen. He changed it from Anderson to Chosen. No, his first name is now Chosen, not Robbie. Thank you. He's really? Chosen Anderson. Really? Yeah. You sure? No, he's so. Chosen Chosen instead of Robbie. <laughs> Let's get now you're making me doubt myself. Let now me double I'm check. I'm doubting you myself. Be careful. I, I very well might be wrong. I thought his name was Robbie Chosen. He didn't change the Anderson? That was, that was so two years ago, Willard. <laughs> oh, you are right. My bad. Oh, Robbie Chosen. Robbie, Robbie Chosen? Chosen? Yeah. He didn't get rid of the Robbie. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Uh, previously known as Robbie Anderson and briefly Chosen Anderson, he is now Robbie Chosen. Yeah. I'm just confused. Yeah. Too much. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Well, we anyway, got, he's a Niner now. What we have yeah. is an odd wide receiver. I'd like a documentary on him and his name. Well, what we have is an arduous process of red <laughs> tape because my my wife, the yeah. lovely supper, she has just now decided to take on Dibley. Hey, which she was always going to do. Dibley? It. Supper Dibley. Sup, sub dibs. Pretty- <laughs> sub dibs. <laughs> So, sup, Dibs? A couple weeks ago, I'm she's like, you know every what? Time I see her. I'm going to finally do it. Oh. And so she writes down a list of everything oh. she needs to change. 50 different things. Well, yeah. 50 different. Pain in the rear. PG&E. Pain, oh, East God. Bay Mud. Uh, Republic Services Garbage. Lululemon. And you start to go through Amazon. You start to go through all the things. DMV, <laughs> Social Security, all my credit cards, my banking, my teaching credential. And she's going through just bippity. Yeah. She makes a list. Yeah. And it literally is 50 different agencies. Tell her to leave the Lululemon one in the old name and maybe she won't have to pay $128 for yoga pants. Well, but she's anyway. actually moved on to other uh, okay. yoga pants companies because the Lulu quality is not what it used to be, but I digest. Oh, is that It's so, a whole thing in my household. But, did, but you could take them back if you get a hole in them and they you give can, you a new one. But Sometimes. the point Keep is your receipts. for Chosen Robbie to change his name yeah. legally. I, that ain't I, easy. I gotta think that that's hard. And, that brutal. What and do you he was do? born Robbie Anderson. Robbie spelled R O B B Y. He now spells it R O B B I E. Correct. Well, I mean, that's a problem. Just ask him mind, again brother. tomorrow Seriously. what his name is. Who knows? You'll be right at some point, Grandy. 
He'll change it to that. And Robbie Chosen is not on the on the Mount Rushmore of athlete name changes. Uh, uh, well, would, Meta, would, Meta World Peace is the president of that. I, I, I think. I don't know about that. First of He's all, on the Rushmore. No? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is oh. in the in the Washington spot. Sure. And you could put Muhammad Ali. If you want to put aside the religious ones and yes. just do the frivolous ones. Mahmoud abdul Rauf. That was a he religious was one. Chad Ocho Cinco. Chad Ocho Cinco. Cinco's up there. Met a world peace. I think World those, Be Free world be is <laughs> on the Rushmore. <laughs> he was he my was favorite. He was one of the originals. He was world my be free. absolute favorite. So if we put aside the religious ones. Yes. The, and the, you know, because Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay, whatever, that's the greatest of all time. Robbie's not making the list. Roxy Bernstein? <laughs> Just a first name. That's a nickname. Please explain. Thank you. Alan Bernstein, <laughs> shout him out. Uh, <laughs> Meta World Peace for sure. Ocho Cinco, yeah. My, my four. World be free. Yeah, Meta World Peace, World be free, Chad Ocho Cinco, and Sup Dibs. Those are my four. That's my Rushmore. That's my Mount Change more. Sup Dibs. Sup Dibs. Sup Dibs. She's going to never see me again. Oh, she's going to hate you more than she already does. <laughs> That's a lot. Does he <laughs> ever let you talk? <laughs> no. It's like a seven minute ride. Stop. From, it's a seven Stop. minute talk. For, Stop. She has to. No talking. <laughs> she goes seven. Why are you still talking? Because she. No. And but. I thought we talked about this. <laughs> no, you talked about it. Yeah, That's but... kind of the bit. Sup, Dibs. <laughs> Sup, or Dibley. Anyway. Robbie Why Chilson. does everybody think I'm in charge of that? I don't have some wand in here. No, but you just don't stop. You're like my two-year-old. To the R TikTok. What's <laughs> wrong you. with that? <laughs> Nothing's wrong I mean, with it. Thank God. Anyway. Supper say dimly. whatever you want on this show. Of course I can. For 14 seconds. Until you interrupt, interrupt you. Me. Exactly. Man, sports, man. man sports. <laughs> anyway, any more anyway. great name changes? No, it, weigh in on the YouTube. But listen to these. Like, And I actually have been doing this in my mind out there where we're thinking about receivers. I'm like, I can't. You know what? Game show music, please. Let's Scott, do it. Da, da, da. You don't have a roster up, do you? Of course not. All right, ladies and gentlemen, especially Supper Dibley, get ready. Dan Dibley's about to talk on the radio. Here we go. How many current... 49er wide receivers on the training camp roster. Can you name? We'll take out Tariq Owens. There are 14 of them. Oh, Jesus. Go ahead. Well, we'll go with uh, Debo, Ayuk, and Juwan. Do I need full names? And like, because. Uh, no, no, no. That's three. I think it's Dyshawn Dish- Dish- right. Samuel. It's not Debo. Yeah, Tyshawn. Tyshawn. Tyshawn, yes. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Supper's calling me right now. Keep You better keep your name she's, out her mouth. No, she's saying, stop. You're talking too much. Totally. Honey. You're ruining the bit. Stop. Go uh, ahead. Trent Taylor and Ronnie Bell and Danny Gray. Okay, why are you doing these in threes? Why, why are you? Because I'm just, I'm knocking them out. I'm at <laughs> okay. six right now. You're at six. Uh, did I say Trent Taylor right there? You did. Gray, Taylor, and Bell. Uh, here's where it gets difficult. Uh... Well, there's two the rookie, the, the, the two rookies, Pearsall and Cowing. I was going to be like, there's a couple of easy yeah, ones. Yeah. Yep, that's eight. And uh, there's a cut. Did I mention Chris Conley? No, that's, that's nine. nine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a uh, Robbie Chosen. Uh, correct. That's ten. Yep. 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 yep and yep. Uh, your boy's running out of steam here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and stop at 10 and feel good about myself. Okay. All right. There is also uh, Malik Turner. Wouldn't have gotten it. Uh, there is Tay Martin. There is John Trey Kirkland. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you did Steiny right there. I did a little that one. Was awesome. That was a little one. Baby Stein. And uh, Frank Darby. All right. No relation son to Terrence, of Terrence Trent. Trent. Yeah, yes, thank you. That's his son. <laughs> a lot hanging. of famous people's sons are the nine or wide receivers this year. And a teammate of Brandon Ayuk at Arizona State. There you go. Frank Darby. There you go. Mm-hmm. All like Ayuk brought <laughs> his, all his teammates. Your is better than his time. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying mm-hmm. to be. I'm not trying to. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah. there you go. So, so yes, people are going to get cut. Well, the, the last four that you named that I didn't. You can go we're ahead out. and say bye bye. So There's, now we're down to ten. Probably no more than six, right? Yeah. That are going to make the team. I think so. Six is even. Uh, that's a big number. 
And it's a big number. It's five or six. It's going right. to be at least five, no more than six. And so if you're Danny Gray and Ronnie Bell right now, you are uh, working with Pittsburgh to see if they can acquire well, Brandon IU. Well, uh, look, obviously Debo makes the team. Um, obviously Juwan makes the team. And Cowing and Pearsall. Those are four locks. Um, yeah, Pearsall I is. I don't know that Cowing's a lock. I think so. I think so. Um, and then, you know, I think Conley is in good shape, but Brandon Ayuk, okay, is Ayuk on the team? Is he not? Yeah. Do they acquire another one? Mayo can make a good not? point about Trent Taylor being the only one that they can really put faith in to catch a punt right now. Yep. Well, so Trent Taylor, and he's a guy that they loved. They let him go. They brought him back. He could be the sixth if they keep six because he's also a special teamer. Um, so, yeah, that's like that's how tight that it's looking at that position with the possibility of acquiring another one still. Yeah. So. It's it's a group where you could look at Ronnie Bell and Danny Gray and you could include them in one of these, you know, crazy fan-friendly three-team trades we're talking about. Yeah, does, it, does anybody need that, though? Does if the Raiders care? trade Devontae Adams, maybe you end up giving, you know, the Raiders the first crack at one of these guys you're going to cut before they become just street free agents. Maybe yeah. it's just a throw in in a trade like this. I mean, it's very pot. Like if Ayuk is, is suddenly on the team, I mean, it's very possible that your five receivers forget Trent, call him the six for catching a punt, but the five receivers would simply be Debo, Jawan, Ayuk, and the two rooks. And the rest of them all would miss the team. Yeah. That's totally possible. And you wind up with one of those guys who gets cut back on the practice squad yeah. potentially, but I mean Conley feels like he's a niner now. Um, you know, yeah, Roddy Bell definitely has a shot at this. Robbie Chosen was brought in for a reason. I don't know. He's got an eight year NFL career. So um maybe maybe he's a part of this. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of questions. But anyway, TJ Hushman's out at some point in the next forty minutes gonna join the show. And he has been, for a long time, Brandon Ayuk's personal wide receiver coach. Worked with him on his way into the NFL, helped him to become an NFL player, and has certainly been um, at least a friend, if not an advisor, uh, ever since then. And they, uh, they still connect a lot. And so as this has sort of hit a new level, let's see what TJ has to say. We'll have that for you a little bit. Herm Edwards was Brandon Ayuk's college coach. He was on with Bonte and Joe this morning. I think pertinent for you all to hear some of this. This is where we started. Um, is the relationship between the Niners and Ayuk irreparable? Absolutely. This is business. And, and this is what you tell every player when you're the head coach, when a player is going through the contract negotiation. You always tell the players this, just watch what happens during these negotiations. If it gets into the news cycle and you're going to have to deal with all that, but at the end of the day, guys, that's the business part of it. It's not personal. And, and I think sometimes players need to learn that, too. This is business. It's nothing against you. It's just business. And business is different than being a football player or being a football coach. And so with that being said, hopefully this thing will, will transpire where it can get done, where both parties, you know, will shake hands and, and hug each other and, and get going. And if not, then, you know, Brandon will go somewhere else and the 49ers will have to regroup and continue to go. And at the end of the day, guys, you know, it, it, I've always said this. It's like if a player gets hurt, in the opening game. You can't cancel the season. You got to play. So I'm with him completely. I don't think there's any bleed over at all. If he were to suddenly sign an extension or figure this out or announce that he's playing on his fifth-year option, I actually believe this group can compartmentalize completely and uh, and, and and just go right, right from there. Um, I don't know what the appetite is for that right now. But I'll, I, I'm struck by the fact that these two have not been able to break up yet. And seemingly, if you listen to people close to them at their core, they both still want to be together. Yes, and there's a time where, you know, you're having trouble and maybe uh, spend some time in the guest room or maybe you do like a temporary separation where, you know, I'm, I'm going to spend a week at my friend's house and then we're going to regroup and figure it out. And that's kind of what this is. It's like a trial separation or it's really more of a guest room stint for one of the members of a relationship where it's not a full on breakup, but things clearly aren't good. And, you know, maybe you're working on a dissolution, not a resolution, but a dissolution of the relationship. And maybe when things cool down, you realize that you do need each other 
you do still love each other. And I think you're right. If if all of this leads to even him playing on his fifth year option, I think that he can be professional enough to put the helmet on and get out there and realize that balling out is the best thing he can do for himself and his team. Herm did point to one potential concern for the 49ers based on this and more. Brandon likes to win. And, you know, he, he wants to he wants to win. And why not? You're on a winning team. And you got a team that obviously every year is, is, is picked whether, you know, one or two to, to, to go to the Super Bowl, to, to represent the NFC. And they've, they've been close. You know, and, and this team, you know, I, I think this team, when I look at it, the question you got to ask yourself, they've been in, what, three Super Bowls uh, in the last 12 years. The energy is, is what you get worried about with a team like this, all the energy that's needed to do that, right? And all of a sudden, you're the target for every team you play. I think that is a very, very educated thing to say right there. And it is my main concern for the 49ers this year. The cameras haven't left camp since the Super Bowl ended. They're following everybody's a roadshow. Everybody wants a new contract. Every position's got a big name at it. Like, think how many household names are on this team. And that whole adage that he's talking about, which is that every opponent is going to get up for you and, and think that that's their personal Super Bowl. Like the 49ers are, um, they're high maintenance. They're high maintenance this year. I hate calling them that because I, I know the tag that goes along with that. I don't mean that they're divas. I just mean this whole outfit right now takes a lot of maintenance. And, uh, and that can wear people out. It can, but that's what comes with winning. And that's what comes with winning when you've got your fullback who's wife is now making clothing for Olympians and she is a celebrity and your running back got married to an actual celebrity and your tight end is out there chugging beers at a concert, getting beers thrown to him by your now celebrity quarterback. So all of these guys have grown in their personality, maybe their ego too, but at least in their recognizability from around the world and around the country. So you're not quite Travis Kelsey with Taylor Swift, but you know you're pretty darn close when you talk about five or six of them. <laughs> you're something. Yeah, 